Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be doing a quick tutorial on using the Extract tool in Adobe Photoshop. I will be using Adobe Photoshop CS2. This works with all the Adobe Photoshops from version 7 on. Um, version 5.5 and, and before is a little bit different but in this case we're going to be using Photoshop CS2. Okay, as you can see we have our picture of our wolf and the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and open up the extract tool and that's going to be located up in the filter section so I'm going to highlight our picture I'm going to go up to filters extract and a new dialog box will appear. If you look up in the top corner you'll see what looks like a little sharpie or a, or a highlighter what you want to do is you want to go ahead and click on that and that'll give us our cursor that we're going to use. Now if you go over to the other side you'll see brush size. You want to go ahead and set the brush size to I don't know maybe about 60 or somewhere in that neighborhood. You can either use the little slider to adjust it or you can come up here and actually type it in. And Actually I think I'm going to go with 65. Yeah that looks about right. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to take and go around the edges loosely doesn't have to be perfect um, just make sure that you take and you get the area that you want right inside the highlighter and I'm just gonna come through and I'm gonna highlight all of my wolf Now you need to make sure that you go ahead and you get everything so make sure that when you do it you go around the border as well. Now as you can see there's part of the wolf in here that I need to get as well and let's see I need to get right there I didn't get. And then just go ahead and make sure you get right around there. Let's see, just make sure I get it cleaned up a little bit. Now once you do that you have this whole section. Now you want to take in the section that you're going to keep you want to go ahead and mark that. So you come up here to this paint bucket which is right underneath that highlighter and then click on the area that you want to keep. Okay, once you do that you can come up here to preview and it'll show you a vague idea of where you got and as you can see the wolf looks pretty good. It doesn't have to be perfect for what we're doing. Um, you can go in and, and retouch it up and make sure that you get it just right depending on what your project is. So now that we got that done, I'm going to come up here and I'm just going to hit OK. So now I have my wolf. Now this stuff over here, as you can see, there's still got a little bit of sky in there. I'm not too worried about that because I'm not going to use the whole thing. Uh, the thing that I mainly want is the wolf itself. Now I want to take and turn that wolf dark, just like it's a silhouette. Um, you'll see what I'm going to be doing here in a second. So I'm going to go up here to Image adjustments, hue and saturation. Now that I have this dialog box open I'm gonna go ahead and grab the saturation and I'm gonna turn the saturation all the way down to about 95, 97 ish somewhere in that ballpark. So right, I don't know, somewhere, somewhere around there. Then I'm going to take the lightness and I'm going to drop the lightness down to about a negative 50. Now to change these settings, just hold over it, click on the left mouse button, and then just drop it down. Now I'm going to go, uh, actually I think I'm going to go about 82. 82 looks about good. I just want to get it just dark enough to where you can still see a little bit but not a whole lot. Okay, now that that's done, go ahead and click OK. Now we have our dark kind of outline of our wolf. Now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and come up to our marching ants, which is going to be up in the top. Now if you right click on the corner, you'll see that you can pick different shapes. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and click the rectangular marquee tool. Now I'm going to go ahead and select a portion of this. doesn't have to be all of it. I just want to make sure I get some of the ground and some of the wolf image and I'm going to go ahead and crop it. Now that I have that wolf 
I'm going to come down here and I'm going to open up my other picture, which in this case is a moon. Now that I've already got this selected here, I'm going to go ahead and go to the top bar, and I'm going to drag my picture of the wolf. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and grab my mover tool. I've already got the marching ants outlining my wolf. So I'm going to go ahead and grab it and drop it over my other picture. And I'm just going to go ahead and move him right, right about there. So now I have my wolf banging at the moon. At this point, you're done. If you feel that it looks good and it's how you want it, just come up here to where it says layer and come down and flatten image. And what that's going to do, it's going to take and change everything from being layered images down to one image. Now when you do that, you will not be able to take and readjust it and remove it if you don't like where it's at. So make sure that if you flatten the image, then it's actually done and you're not going to be doing any alterations to it. The benefit of that is that when you do it, it doesn't take up as much room because it's basically one picture now instead of two. Uh, it's not so bad in this case, but sometimes you'll have maybe 10 or more layers depending on what you're doing, and that'll take up a lot of room, especially if you have a lot of projects like that. Well, this has been another Chapman Photography tutorial. I hope you found it useful and beneficial. If at some point you want to take and subscribe or add me on YouTube, feel free to do that. I have tutorials at least once a week, sometimes two or three times a week. Um, keep checking back often and hopefully I will have some tutorial up there, either Photoshop or After Effects or Sony Vegas or DVD Architect or one of the imaging programs and you'll find it useful and you'll come back for more. Thank you for watching.